guys, it's Holly here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're diving into a brand new study from a university based in Brazil that looked at whether plant-based protein blends can match animal-based protein for building muscle and strength when paired with resistance training. Now, there's been a lot of discussion on this topic lately, and some claim that plant proteins are inferior because they're lower in certain amino acids like leucine, while others argue that with the right blend and enough total protein, the differences are minimized. So let's unpack what this new randomized clinical trial found. Over the last few years, plant-based proteins have exploded in popularity, not just among vegans and vegetarians, but also among athletes and everyday gym goers who want to make what they perceive to be a more sustainable or health conscious choice. But the big question, however, has always been, can plant protein really build as much muscle as animal protein? So from a physiological standpoint, muscle growth depends on a process called muscle protein synthesis or MPS for short. The creation of new muscle proteins after you eat protein and train. What drives this process is the amount and type of amino acids, particularly leucine, which act like a switch to turn on MPS. Now, here's where the debate comes in. Animal-based proteins like whey, casein, or milk proteins tend to have a higher leucine content and are digested faster, leading to a strong, rapid rise in blood amino acids. Plant-based proteins, on the other hand, often have less leucine and can be less digestible, meaning fewer amino acids are absorbed. Now, for those that weren't aware of this quality, plant proteins are often less digestible because they're bound with tough cell walls and contain natural compounds like phytates, tannins, and enzyme inhibitors that make it harder for your body to break them down and absorb all the amino acids efficiently. This is why historically studies have shown a slightly weaker anabolic response to plant proteins like soy or wheat when compared to whey protein, at least in the short term or in acute clinical trials. But newer research has started to reveal a different story. When total protein intake is adequate, around 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, and when total proteins are blended from example soy and pea or from wheat and corn, the difference in amino acid profile tend to even out. These blends can help provide all the essential amino acids in roughly the same ratios to support muscle growth. So the research team in Brazil wanted to test this directly. If both groups consume enough total protein, does it really matter whether the protein comes from plants or animals? So to do this, the researchers aim to compare 12 weeks of resistance training combined with either a plant-based soy plus pea protein drink or an animal-based whey protein drink, each providing 45 grams of protein per day on top of their usual omnivorous diet, just to see if the sources of protein affected their muscle mass, which were measured via DEXA scans, quadricep muscle size measured via B-mode ultrasound, and lower body strength measured via a leg press one rep max test. So so let's take a closer look at the methods. The researchers recruited 44 healthy young men aged between 18 and 35, all of whom had no prior resistance training experience. Participants were randomly assigned to one of two groups. One group received a plant-based protein blend made from soy and pea, while the other consumed animal-based protein, specifically whey. Both supplements came as ready-to-drink shakes, identical in flavor and appearance, and were consumed three times per day, once with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Each serving contained around 15 grams of protein for a total of 45 grams per day over a 12 week period. Now you can see the nutrition breakdown of these two shakes in the image on the screen. Both groups followed the same supervised resistance training program, which was focused on the lower body. Training was performed three times per week on non-consecutive days with the exercises including the leg press, leg extension, and leg curl, and the program progressively increased in its intensity. For the first four weeks, participants performed two sets of 12 to 15 repetitions. In weeks five through eight, they did three sets of 10 to 12 reps, and in the final phase, participants completed four sets of eight to 10 reps, a classic linear progression model. Each session was fully supervised by experienced staff to ensure consistency and correct technique. To assess the outcomes, the researchers measured muscle size, body composition, and strength before and after the intervention. Muscle size was measured using ultrasound of the vastus lateralis. Total and regional lean mass were determined using DEXA scans. And finally, strength was evaluated using a leg press one rep max test. The graphic on the screen gives you a bit more of a visual overview of how the study was conducted. Throughout the study, participants' diets were closely monitored using multiple 24-hour dietary recalls to ensure they had made 
maintain their normal eating patterns aside from the provided protein supplements. Now, this is important because both groups followed an omnivorous diet and started with roughly one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So the supplement raised that total to around 1.8 grams per kilogram, which is considered more optimal for muscle growth. Importantly, this was a double-blind randomized control trial, meaning neither the participants or the researchers knew who received which supplement until after data were analyzed. Adherence to both training and supplementation were excellent, averaging around 90%, and no side effects were reported. So what did the authors find? Let's take a look at the results. After 12 weeks of training and supplementation, both groups showed substantial improvements in muscle size, lean mass, and strength, but there were no meaningful differences between plants plant and animal protein. Lean mass increased across the board. On average, total whole body lean mass rose by about 2.4 to 2.5 kilograms, while appendicular lean mass, which is basically the combined leg mass and the arms, increased by roughly 1.2 to 1.8 kilograms. When they looked specifically at the legs, leg lean mass went up by about 0.9 to 1.3 kilograms in both groups. Ultrasound measurements of the vastus lateralis cross-sectional area also showed clear hypertrophy, with gains of roughly 0.9 to 1.3 centimeters squared. Again, nearly identical between the plant and animal protein groups. Strength improvements followed a similar pattern. On the leg press one rep max, both groups increased their maximal strength by about 60 kilograms, which is a very solid increase for untrained individuals over a 12 week time period. Interestingly, both groups also experienced small reductions in body fat, suggesting a favorable shift in body composition overall. When it came to dietary intake, both groups successfully raised their protein intake and amino acid consumption to the targeted levels. The participants' leucine intake, which is a key amino acid for triggering muscle protein synthesis, was nearly identical in both groups at around 9 grams per day by the end of the study. And finally, adherence to both the supplementation and training programs was high, over 90%, and the blinding was very effective, meaning participants couldn't reliably tell which protein they were actually consuming. Now, at first glance, this might seem surprising that the plant and animal proteins all produce nearly identical outcomes. After all, animal proteins like whey have long been considered the gold standard because they're high in leucine and are rapidly digested, characteristics sought to maximize the muscle building response. But this study reinforces a growing body of evidence showing that when total protein intake is sufficient, the source of that protein might not matter as much as once believed. Both groups were consuming around 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram per day, which is around the threshold needed to optimize muscle growth. That likely ensured that both groups had enough amino acids available to fully stimulate muscle protein synthesis, regardless of whether those amino acids came from plants or animals. Another important factor is that the plant supplement wasn't a single protein source. It was a blend of soy and pea protein. These proteins complement one another. Soy is rich in some essential amino acids that pea protein lacks and vice versa. For example, pea protein is relatively low in methionine and cysteine, while soy protein, on the other hand, provides more of these two amino acids. Together, they create a more balanced amino acid profile that mimics animal proteins quite closely. The leucine content was also matched between plants and whey drinks, around one gram per serving, which likely played a role in the equalized anabolic signaling between both groups. Now, there's also a practical point to consider here. The participants were young, healthy, and omnivorous, meaning their background diet already contained a variety of amino acids from mixed food sources. So while this study shows that plant proteins can perform just as well in this context, we can't automatically assume the same results would also apply to strict vegans or to other populations, such as older adults who often have higher protein needs or a reduced anabolic sensitivity to dietary protein. So what's the big picture here? This study shows that when overall protein intake is high enough and your training is consistent, the source of additional supplemental protein, be it plant or animal, doesn't seem to make much of a difference for building muscle or strength. That doesn't mean all proteins are identical. It just means that in practical terms, if you're getting enough total protein from quality sources, you can absolutely build muscle if you supplement with plant-based protein. 
Now, for anyone who prefers plant proteins, whether for health, sustainability, or personal values, this research is highly reassuring. You don't need whey to make great progress. You just need enough total protein, variety, and training stimulus. So instead of stressing over which protein powder is best, focus on getting enough total protein and just showing up consistently in the gym, because that, my friends, is what truly drives progress. Now, if you found this breakdown helpful, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel for more evidence-based content every week. And let me know in the comments, do you use plant or whey protein? And have you noticed a difference in your progress? Until next time, keep training smart, feeling well, and I'll see you in my next video.